I have looked at the Intel NUC as a music server that was affordable, works fine, but a bit fiddly to set up, as I have showed in my three part video. I reviewed the Run Nucleus Plus server that needed only a drive full of music to get playing, but came at a premium. This time a music server that is easy to set up, supports about any protocol used for audio servers and doesn't cost an arm and a leg. There is this thing in the audio world, and perhaps beyond that, where there is a very low appreciation for good software, at least in the monetary sense. This is so unjust. For unless you are rather knowledgeable, you might encounter all kinds of small problems when setting up a music server yourself, as I notice from the questions asked to me. And I really can't help you in those individual cases. I'm not clairvoyant and remote troubleshooting takes more time than I can afford. That's why I came to love the music server I discuss here. Only very basic computer skills are needed to set it up and it comes with a lifetime support. The Sonic Transporter i5 has a black aluminium housing and is about the size of a Mac Mini, measuring 58 by 134 by 172 mm. The front only holds the power button. Short presses switch the computer on or off, while a long press forces it to switch off without waiting for the software to power down, just as any other normal computer. And in fact, it is a normal, fanless computer made by Polywell that runs an Intel Core i5-5257U at 2.7 GHz and has 8 GB of RAM and a 64 GB SSD inside for the server database. The rear shows us two USB 3 ports, an HDMI and VGA port for service purposes only, so there is no audio over HDMI, two USB 2 ports, a gigabyte Ethernet port and the 12 volt DC power input. Although there are four USB ports, only one USB drive can be mounted at one time. No, I'm not going to open the computer for the simple reason there's not much to learn audio wise. What is interesting audio wise is the server version of the Sonic Orbiter OS that you can see as a Linux based front end from which you select the server software you want to use. Just open an internet browser on another computer, tablet or smartphone and type sonictransport.local in the address field. The HTML interface includes a mobile version, so even on a smartphone maintenance is done with ease. The apps menu lets you check if there is an update for the Sonic Transporter OS. Check on the installed software and lets you install other software. Since the software version was up to date, let's go to the installed apps. Currently Drive Mounter and Noon Server are installed, but installing another type of server like HQ Player Server, Minim Server, Plex Media Server, Bubble UPnP Server, Subsonic Media Streamer or Squeezebox Server is a matter of a few clicks to stop or uninstall Rune Server and installing the alternative. I ran also Rune Server and Squeezebox Server simultaneously, although this is foolish of course, since Rune is capable of driving Squeezeboxes as well. For paid software like HQ Player and Rune you do need to buy the license separately. Also keep in mind that erasing a server software will also erase the library data. Instructions on how to save and backup this data can be found in the forum. Next to the server programs there are also some nice tools like the Sonora UPnP bridge that lets you use selected DLA renderers as endpoint for Rune or Squeezebox. I didn't try this since I didn't have an appropriate DLA renderer available during the testing. Judging by the forum information this is really something for the enthusiast. When you open the settings for Rune Server, there will be options that the Rune Rock Server doesn't offer. You can have the server access the drive containing your music in read-only mode, 
so protecting your music collection. This also means that you can't connect to the drives on the Sonic Transporter using a file finder and thus need to connect the drive to another computer to add music or change the settings temporarily of course. A second option lets you switch on or off local playback in the Rune server. I presume it saves resources when local playback is not used. Remarkable is that you have to mount a USB drive manually using the external drive mounter while Rune Rock offers auto mounting. But it needs to be done only once so it's not really a problem. For the rest you use the Rune interface for all settings in Rune. The same goes for the other programs. The Squeezebox server looks functionally identical to the regular version and I presume the same goes for the other server programs. A feature I really like is the system status that shows the CPU load. It takes away uncertainty if there is a something wrong in your system. According to Small Green Computer the Sonic Transporter i5 is suited for music libraries up to 450,000 tracks. I can't imagine there are many people that have that amount of tracks. To show you how powerful the Sonic Transporter i5 is I started playback of 8 streams while still importing music. On the right the CPU load as indicated by the system status. The top graph shows the cumulative load, ignore the lower graphs and certainly don't think there are 4 cores. The Intel Hyper Threading technology simulates 4 cores as where there are just 2. As you can see that's probably all you need and it results in a 9 watt specified power consumption. Another thing on this test, most streams also need a DSP work since they were chosen for that. Look at the zones panel, the top Apple TV played DSD and thus needed to be downsampled to 44.1 kHz. The second Apple TV was playing downsampled music from 24192 as was the Jabra Bluetooth headset connected to my iMac 5K and the Sonos. The other endpoints could handle the higher sampling rates. Please realize that these are 8 separate signals and not one track sent to all endpoints. In the background there were also other DSP functions active. Headroom management minus 3 dB and 3 band stop filters at 32, 64 and 128 Hz with a Q of 15. At no single moment did the CPU load exceed 85%. Where the sound is concerned the following. If you use the Sonic Transporter as intended, using a networked audio interface like the Sonori or SOTM models or other endpoints connected over the network, the Sonic Transporter doesn't sound. Meaning that there is no sound quality difference with other well built audio servers in the same situation. Only when you connect the DAC directly to it, the sound quality will be influenced. Don't forget that the hardware is just a good fanless computer. It's not better or worse than an Intel NUC running Rune Rock or Rune Nucleus Plus. Only if you use a computer that is specially tweaked for audio or a streamer built to do the server part as well, you might get results equal to using a networked audio interface. A rather expensive way to go. I receive many questions on this topic and will dive deeper into this next month. The US price is $795. European viewers keep in mind that prices in the states are always excluding sales tax as where in Europe vendors are obliged to publish prices including sales tax called VAT. Also realize that the Sonic Transporter i5 comes with an operating system. I know if you are computer savvy you could use Rune Rock or Linux and that's free. But for those that are not, be aware that even mounting a drive in a Linux system can take you an hour or more if you don't know anything about Linux. Been there, done it. I've been looking around and found a silent NUC and when configured identically it costed 1000 euros. If you want to save money, go for a NUC with a forced cooling and step back to an Intel Core i3 processor processor if your music library isn't big and you don't want to do DSP functions. What you can't buy separately is a Sonic Orbiter server version. 
and although I have installed RuneRock many times for my testing and for people in the trade that rather have me do it, I enjoyed the almost plug and play approach small green computers had. For reference I will place links to the other reviews of servers and keep a keen eye for other interesting servers. So if you're interested in more of these, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal. Any financial support is much appreciated. The links are in the comments. Help you to help even more people enjoy music at home by telling your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.